Today, I'm going to show you how to create a user navigation flow for your websites. So user navigation flow, the user flow, is a really important document that you need to understand the user's navigation through your website. So uh, let's talk about how do you create a user flow diagram for your website. So for this to happen, you need to have a sitemap. So a sitemap is a document that actually shows how many pages are in your website and how the information is distributed in your website. So a sitemap can sort of look like this maybe. So you have a home page and you have this many websites of the pages in there and then how information or what kind of content is going to go there. So sitemap and user navigation flow or a user flow is completely different. Uh, so once you have the uh, sitemap and you know that how things are going to uh, be arranged, it's time to create a user flow. So let's talk about how to create a user flow. So a user flow is how you basically navigate from one page to another page. So uh, for, for example, let's say uh, you have a, uh, a home page here, right? And when you click on a button, it actually takes you to another page, right? So this is basically what happens in a user flow, right? So when you click on it, it actually takes you to another website. But this is not the format that you should actually create your user flows in. So you have to make it in a standard format. So other people who are working on the project will also be able to understand what you mean, right? So we are going to use something called a flow chart, right? In, in, when you are creating a user flow, there are a couple of shapes that are very important that you will be using in your user flow. So there is a box, right? That's a very common shape that you will be using in a user flow. There is this diamond shape thing there, right? There is, there are the arrows, definitely, right? There will be a rounded um, rectangle sort of thing like this, right? So these are some of the major shapes that you will be using while building a user flow. And these shapes actually mean something, right? It's not just random. So there is a meaning to each of the shapes. So whenever you want to show a page, right, you will be using this, right? This is called the process shape, right? So any kind of process, right, or a page happens in here. So when you want to say that, okay, home page, you are going to use a box to decide it, to, to show that. Now, this particular thing is called the decision, right? So if the user will have to, or the user is required to take a decision, it will be shown by this shape. So for example, in your home page, if there are four buttons, those buttons needs to be shown with this shape because that's a decision that the user will have to take. All the connections, right, will be shown with this. So it is called a connector. Okay. So all the connections between the pages and decisions and everything will be shown with this. And the last thing, since it's the last thing, it's called the terminator, right? So a terminator is this. I'm just kidding. A terminator is basically uh, where the user's flow or the action basically ends. You are going to describe that using a terminator right so this is how the shapes work i hope you are you know clear about this now uh, let's talk about the tool that you want to create uh, or we will be using to build a user flow right we will not be drawing it like that it's going to be very clumsy and i'm not a very good artist so they will not understand anything if i draw my user flow like this so let's go to a tool we are going to use a tool called flow map it's a really interesting app that's free uh, so you just go here and you can see that you can build sitemaps, user flows, customer journey maps, and a lot with this tool, right? So you can sign up for free with your email. I already have an ID. Let's go in and log in here. Okay, so we have this. Now, the problem with this free version is that you can only have one project at a time. Uh, so if I click one more project, it might not work because we are on the free version. So what we can do is we can delete this project. So we are back to you know, zero projects and we can start building our first project. So click create project and you can call it the project name. So if you are making a flow map, user flow for your portfolio site, let's call it portfolio and create a project. So we have a project which is created like this. And you can see when you are here, you can build a sitemap here or you can build a user flow, right? So we will 
create a user flow. We are not going to talk about sitemaps in this. So we'll click on user flow. And it's going to say, what is a new user flow? We'll see that a new visitor. So we're going to create a user flow for a new visitor on my portfolio site. And we will start from blank because there are no other options, right? So let's start from blank. And we have this. So we are in the user flow right now. And this is your workspace, right? So when you go here, you can see that there is this uh, box which actually follows you with this plus icon on it. This means that you can click and you can create a shape there. So when you click on this, it will ask you, do you want to create a terminator? I hope you remember these terms. You want to create a decision. You want to create a process, right? So let's start with the process because it's going to start with, or maybe let's start with um, from in the right order, right? So we are going to actually start from outside our website, right? So that will be from a Terminator, right? So if you have uh, used or when you have, if you have studied computers in school, uh, this is one of the first exercises that we will do, right? We, we will basically write start here and then we will start the process. It's because it is happening outside the actual uh, user flow. So the user is starting and then it is going to the home page, right? So we are going to write this is our home page and we can connect this so if you go to this any boxes you can see this four circles here these are nodes so what you can do is you can click and you can drag to make a connection so now the start is connected to the home page so when the user is starting it is immediately taking them to the home page right so we have this now what we have to do is the decisions that the user can make in the home page so let's say they have we have four buttons in there right so let's start by creating these uh, buttons so let's click somewhere randomly and choose a decision and write the first choice that they can make or the name of the first button that they see so they can see something like my works right so that is the first decision they can also see something like uh, contact me they can also see maybe uh, about me and they can also click on my social media icon, right? Social media icon, icon or icons, right? Whatever it is. So um, we have all these things here. For so from the home page, the user can take any of these decisions that they can. So we can connect it to all the boxes, right? So we're connecting it to all the boxes. So from the home page, they can take any decision. So we are going to do only one user flow. What will happen if they select, let's say, my works, right? So let's focus on this. They clicked on My Works. What will happen in there? So if you click on the button My Works, it will take them to a page, right? So we are going to click this and say that, okay, that's a page and it's called the My Works page. We will connect it together. So if you, in home page, they will see these buttons. When they click on this button, it will take them to the My Works page, right? That's the flow that the user is going to have, right? And, um, we can still say so when in my workspace what are the things that they can do so we will create some decisions they can uh, basically click on a work thumbnail right so click on a thumbnail of a work so let's imagine that they are actually seeing uh, in works my workspace there is a gallery of your work and they can click on any thumbnail that's one decision that they need to make when they click on that thumbnail what is going to happen so it's going to open up uh, that image in full screen, let's say that. So we'll create one more uh, page here and say that uh, the work image, right? So when somebody clicks, go to goes to your workspace, they can see a gallery and they click on the gallery thumbnail, it opens up that image, right? Now, is there any decision that they can make from here? There is a close button, right? So you can click and create one more button here close right so work image can be closed and when it is closed where will it go to it will go back to my works page right so now i hope you got an idea of how the whole navigation here works right so somebody is going to come to your home page and they will click on my works button it will take them to my works page and in that they can actually click on any thumbnail that they have and uh, the image will open up and then they can close it. When they click on close button, they will go back to my workspace, right? So that's how a user flow works. Now let's take a look at something else, right? So for example, 
if something is going outside your website, that will be a terminator, right? The user's journey ends right there because it's going out of your website. So for example, if somebody goes to your homepage and then click on the SM icon and you want to send them to your Instagram, that needs to be mentioned in a terminator. So Instagram. So if somebody clicks on the SM icon, social media icon, it takes them to your Instagram, which is outside your website. So your journey ends right there at your website, right? So similarly, you can do user flow for every single action, right? Uh, and if there is a connection to, let's say, if the user can um, go from, let's say, my workspace to contact me from this page itself, you can also connect that. But it's not a good idea to actually show multiple user flows in one, right? So you always create a user flow with one action in mind, right? A user flow for, let's say, a user wants to check out my image, right? That is one user flow. So it will not be confusing because if you try to do everything into one user flow, there will be a lot of like connections going back and forth and you will not get any idea that where or what is connected to what, right? So you can always do one workflow. So for example, let's say, uh, let's click here, take the text to and type user flow for showing So this particular user flow is very specific to this action, right? So it basically shows only the user flow to check out my work in the portfolio. This is how you should be creating user flows, right? So you can create another user flow if you know you want to show how uh, a person contacts you from your portfolio. That's a completely different document. You can make it like that. So there will be multiple user flows for your websites or your apps when you're building them. Don't try to create all the user flows into one diagram. It will be so confusing, right? So this basically shows the user flow of how the user navigates in your website to see your work, right? So I hope this is clear. So in that case, when you are actually doing it for this user flow, you don't even need to show this, right? And just say that these are the decisions, but don't make any of these decisions. Take this, click on my works and go here. And this is the user flow of uh, this particular project, right? So I hope you are clear on how to build a user flow. So uh, start making a portfolio. I think you can just working start working on practicing on making a portfolio project and then think about how the users will navigate in your portfolio. Try this, uh, use this tool, and uh, keep all these shapes in mind, right? How to actually use it. And this is something that you will easily get confused with, when to use what shape. Always refer to the video, right? When you are actually creating a page, it should be a box. When you're creating buttons, it should be uh, a diamond. And then, you know, when you're leaving your website or your app, it should be a terminator, which is a rounded rectangle. Now, one other thing, uh, you have to actually think of it logically, right? So if you click, if you connect one button to another button, it means that when you click on a button, in that in the place of this button, this button is going to pop up, right? So don't connect a button to another button, right? When you click on a button, it will take you to another page. That's how normally websites works, right? So you have to think of it logically as well and try to apply all those knowledge when we are building a user flow. This is a very important document for designers, programmers, developers, and all that in the later stage. So be very careful with it. I hope this gave you an insight. Please start working on this and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.